You have commercial agents. You have theatrical agents. You have agencies that have commercial departments and theatrical departments. So I want you to think about the industry like this. Two sides. You have the commercial world on one. You have the networks and the studios on the other. TV and film, commercials, print. We can throw a voiceover over here. Two sides. Now, many people want to do television and film. Unless you specifically want to go do Broadway, then most likely you're headed to New York. But if you want to actually get into television and film, you're going to need a theatrical agent over on this side. The problem is, what gets you in is not that you want it. Your desire is not what gets you in. It's your tools. It's your marketing materials. So for a TV and film agent, one who is reputable, one who is signatory, Signatory meaning SAG after or ATA, which we'll get into. But just think of signatory as the legit professional. It's where you want to be. Your theatrical agent is going to want to see footage that's called a demo reel. Why? Because they have to see you in the medium that it is that they're going to pitch you to theatrical casting directors. Now when I say theatrical, once again, I'm not talking about theater. I'm talking about TV and film. If you do not have a demo reel, you're going to have to go the commercial route. But a commercial agent is going to want to see something as well. That is called a headshot. Why? Because commercials are based off of your look, your persona, your charisma. So they have to be able to see that and feel that through a headshot. It's why on the commercial side and the theatrical, your headshot is always going to be the number one asset that you can use. It's the first thing that anyone ever sees of you in the industry. It's your headshot. Picture, even if you do a mail-in submission, you're submitting a headshot, a cover letter, a resume, in an envelope. The first thing they do is they pull out your 8x10 headshot and they look at the photo. If the photo is bad, it is getting tossed, it is getting ripped, it's getting used as a coffee placeholder, but if it's good, then that can change your career. See, right away, a commercial agent, they understand their roster. They know what they need. And so if you just happen 
to show up and be someone that can feel a position that they need and want, they'll meet with you. Now, what you do in the meeting, we'll get into. But the first thing is, how do you get the meeting? Well, I'm telling you right now. Your headshot is your number one tool that you will need. It needs to be professional. There is a difference between theatrical headshots and commercial headshots. Commercials. Everything is bright, smiley. When you watch commercials, you don't see anyone sad. Unless it's a Super Bowl commercial or they're doing a spoof of something. Why? Because they're selling a product. Real quick, if you're ever in a position where you don't understand fully, like, hmm, I get the concept of what a commercial headshot would be, but I don't really know what that is, go ahead and email us at www.talentagencyguide at gmail.com. Once again, that's www.talentagencyguide at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Talent Agency Guide, or you can visit our website at www.talentagencyguide.com. Okay, so we're dealing with commercial agents right now, commercial headshots. What does your cover letter say? Have you written out your biography? Do you know your story? Do you know your pitch? Do you know what to do in the meeting? Well, if you're a part of the video coaching program, you will know <laughs> because we break it all down. But right now, I just want to give you a little sort of on the top, enough value that you can use to where you literally get a clear picture of the industry. But the coaching program was designed to actually break everything down for you. So if you have it, amazing. I look forward to hearing all the success stories that you get out of it. And for some reason, if you're seeing this and you do not have it, go to www.talentagencyguide.com and sign up. Okay, so your cover letter basically has to be about a paragraph, to a paragraph and a half, can be two paragraphs at the most. You want it to be straight to the point. Are you SAG? Are you non-union? That needs to be in the first sentence. Hi, my name is such and such. I'm a non-union actor who is extremely athletic. So whatever your strength is, that's what you're... So the first thing you want to do is you're going to put your name. You're going to put what it is about you. Like, for instance, if you're multi-ethnic, if you're bilingual, if you could speak Spanish and English, that becomes a very strong asset to use. Why? Because not everyone is bilingual. So if in your cover letter... Let's say they're looking for someone who can speak Spanish, and it says it. Oh, interesting. That's me. So we'll get more into your cover letter, but you're basically telling a story about yourself. You want them to 
basically imagine Simba, right? Like you want Simba to become Mufasa and be a king and rule. You don't want to see Simba not make it out of the wilderness. So if you're able to touch an agent's heart in the meeting and really get them to connect to how long you've been fighting for your dream and what you're willing to give in order to succeed, if you can connect to their heart, it's going to be hard for them to turn you down. Now, real quick, because this is very important. Understand that most auditions that you get on the commercial side, you're going to have to do a code read. If you do not know what a code read is, Google it or email us. Um, a code read, it's going to be a side like, for instance, it could say something like, do you remember when you were young and the words calories and fat grams didn't even exist in your vocabulary? Well, Taco Bell has a brand new menu. It's called Borderlands. It means you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, for half the calories and half the fat. Now, I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older and my metabolism slowing down, I'm definitely going to Taco Bell. Right? So it'll be about a paragraph, a paragraph and a half, and it's going to be commercial size. And you're going to get about five to seven minutes. So as soon as you come into an agency's office, usually they'll hand you the code read, give you that seven minutes by yourself. Then they're either going to bring you into a room and put you on camera. And you're going to have to deliver your code read to camera. Or they're going to bring you in an office and it'll be either just one agent, two or three agents. And then you're going to have to perform that code read in front of them. The commercial world is very fast. And so because of it, individuals have to be able to cold read and you have to be able to improv. It's a must. Why is that? Okay. Let's say on... A Wednesday, McDonald's decides they want to do a new national commercial. They call up an ad agency. An ad agency calls up a commercial casting director. A commercial casting director goes on something called Casting Networks, right, and places whatever communication that had been transferred from McDonald's to the ad agency to the casting director. And they usually go like this. We're looking for four friends who are at a barbecue and they're about to eat some delicious ribs when one of their friends remembers about the time that they had a McRib sandwich. And then all these friends just decide, you know what, let's leave this barbecue <laughs> and go walk down the street and go to McDonald's. And that will be playing during Super Bowl. <laughs> so because of that, The casting director puts it up Wednesday evening. Thursday, the agencies are all submitting their actors and actresses for this audition. Friday? That's the first audition. Callbacks, Monday. Fitting, Wednesday. Then that next Friday, they're filming. That's how quick the commercial world moves. 
within a few weeks, that ad is up and it's playing all over the nation. Now, for movies, that could be a two-year process. But for commercials, just like that. Why? Because the companies, they already have their marketing budget. So they just look and wait on trends. As soon as they feel like it's a great marketing opportunity, then they're going to market. So it can happen um, immediately. And because it's happening so quick, nothing is set in stone. So even in the audition process, they're still trying to figure out exactly how the commercial is going to go. So if someone does an amazing job in like a commercial audition, you would think that they would say, okay, that person, they have the job. No, that's not how it works. That person's audition just becomes the base of all the following auditions. So now the casting director is directing people to do like the audition that the person did an amazing job. And then that person still has to compete with everybody else in the call. That's the world that you're entering. All right, so that's the commercial side. Now, for television and film, and actually because you have um, this moment of time that we are sharing together, do want to give you probably the most valuable thing I can give to you at this stage. And that is the loophole of relationships. Relationships is what this industry is based on. Relationships. So, how do you get a relationship? Want to get a theatrical agent? Have no relationship. Have no demo reel yet. This is the loophole. You get signed with the commercial department of a good talent agency. And you form a relationship with your commercial agent. How do you form that relationship? In this industry, you form it by booking a job. Book several jobs, and you will naturally have a relationship with your agent. At that time, you've been, or in the meantime, you've been working on getting footage. You've been self submitting to all the casting sites. You're on Actors Access. You're on LA Casting, which is now Casting Networks. That's for all old heads out there <laughs> that remember that time. So once you have your footage, then you can go to your commercial agent and say, would you mind referring me over to the theatrical side of our agency? I do have a demo reel that I would love to show them. Bam. Now all the commercial agent has to do is walk across the hall. and give a referral. So that's how you do it. So through commercials, because they're not really looking for this long drawn out resume. Yes, you do need, you need training, right? But if you have the look that an agency wants, they will at least give you a meeting. Now, what you do in that meeting is going to depend on your craft. 
So don't wait. And matter of fact, if you don't have an acting class, once again, I want you to go to www.talentagencyguide.com and sign up to one of our acting classes, either in person or on Skype. We want to work with you. We want to help you. You should always be working on your craft. Okay, this is one of the most competitive industries that there is. It's like being a professional athlete. You have to be training. Even if you're not in class, you should be in front of a camera every day. You should be reading out loud every day. Parents of children who want to act, have them reading out loud. They have to articulate their words. They have to work on memorization. These are all essential things that they will need in the future. And so start working on it right now. Don't wait. Even cold reads. Pick up a book. Grab a sentence. Look at it. Look to camera. Repeat whatever that sentence is. So you're reading. I am going to go to the dentist next week. And then you're looking at the camera. I am going to go to the dentist next week. And then you're looking, picking it up in your brain, and then you're delivering to camera. Over time, a muscle builds. So you're able to have commercial size or television size in your hand that you have not memorized and you can still be in a scene or you can still be connected to the camera and also be able to drop down quickly, pick up with the, whatever information you need and then deliver it to camera. When you're delivering to camera, Usually the only time you're going to do that is in a host type of situation or if you're slating, which is one of the most important things in the commercial world. Your slate is basically presenting who you are in a very quick, precise time. Hey, hi, how are you? My name is Emmanuel King. I'm so, so excited to be here. And then you're going to turn to the left. I'm sitting right now, but you would be standing. Turn to the right. And then, bam, back to camera. So, left, right, back to camera. The left and the right is your profile. Now, the reason why they're making you do this is they have to see, do you have all your limbs? Remember, I told you the commercial world moves very, very quickly. So outside of the audition and the callback and the fitting, the next time they see you is on set <laughs> with a lot of money on the line. So they're looking at everything. Because, imagine this, there's 150 actors going after a part. Okay? Let's say there's two people per session, so what, 75 different auditions? I think the added, and let's say each audition is 10 minutes. Imagine sitting there for 10 minutes. One. Now you're only on number two, and that's another 10 minutes. Two. And you're on the third one. Three. And even if it was five minutes, just imagine that. 
You get the point. So to speed up the process, especially on the first audition, they go through the slates. Why? Because they can see who's nervous. They can see someone's characteristics, their mannerisms. They can tell if the person is afraid or if the person has done this just by watching your slate. The camera is always watching in these auditions. Ad agencies or the studio executives, they're watching what is being captured. So everything that you do on your audition, there is a reason. So the reason why they make you slate is they want to hear your voice. You may have a great look, but can't speak English. How are they going to know? That's why they make you slate. Okay. Now, on the television and film side, we got to start with the networks. Do we know what the networks are? 